Hey everybody, Norm over here, and it's Thumpin' Thursday, and I got a really good friend of mine, a fellow Miamian. I mean, I grew up in Miami, this guy grew up in Miami, and I remember him from back in the day, and this guy's got quite a history, my buddy Rudy Sarzo. <laughs> woo woo! And, hey Norman, and, how you doing? All right, buddy, thank you. Just trying to stay safe here. Oh. Um, so Rudy, um, they're doing actually uh, part of a Vet Eddie Van Halen documentary in here and they were interviewing Rudy and Rudy played with Quiet Riot and Randy Rhodes and uh, all those guys, you know, Ozzy and all that. And uh, you knew Eddie through that, right? You guys yeah. doing gigs well, together? Well, you know, being local, you know, we're always running to each other, the Rainbow. We did a few shows together, like, you know, they they headlined the US Festival and we were the first band on uh -huh. <laughs> Choir Riot. Cool. And, you know, of course, you know, at one time Eddie had his own signature guitars with TV. And you so, were endorsed by and, them. Too. Yeah, so did I. I was with TV for almost like 40 years, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we had, you know, we're always running to each other and hang out. So I never like to let Rudy get out of here without putting him to work. So we right. had him do Thumping Thursday because I would have been elected and you're going <laughs> to yes. get a much better <laughs> demo with, with Rudy over here than me. I would have made you do it. So Norm. I know Jen was uh, twisting my arm and then Rudy walked in. I went, wait a second. <laughs> so put this guy to work. So Rudy, what do we got here? We got a... Let's see what we got. This is a reissue oh, case, yeah. but that is a 59 mm -hmm. P-Base. Wow. It's a and reissue case. It's a reissue case. That's but it's right. got the gold anodized guard, still has the covers on it. Cool maple neck, and the action's lower than low, plays really great. Um, you like the shape of that neck? Yeah, I mean, you can always tell like the history of an instrument by looking at the neck. Where they played it. And, and what kind of music they played. Yeah. Probably a lot of funk in E. Uh -huh, there you go. <laughs> this is, you know, when, when you get a vintage instrument that is in this condition, which means it's a loving condition, but a working men's instrument. Right. They took care of it, but they, uh, they used it. it. A lot of late nights in clubs. Mm -hmm. That's it. And what happens That could is, be a cigarette or it could have been something else that was there with it. You know, never know, you know, with those musicians, you know, it could have been something. Uh, <laughs> God, God only knows what it is. Yeah. It just adds to the charisma of the instrument. And one thing is for sure, an instrument that is played this much it's a, it's it's a desirable instrument. Somebody the, loved it. Yeah, to the to the first owner, because like in my case, my my first professional bass was the 1967 jazz bass, mm -hmm. and I played that from 1967, and the last time that I can remember playing it, because I really don't know what happened to it. I oh, know it was not yeah. stolen. Yeah. But was with Ozzy in 1982. As a matter of fact, I got yeah. photos of that. It's it's the same bass. I played that with Quiet Riot. Did you so have like a burn mark up on top on yours? No, thing? because I don't smoke. Oh, you don't <laughs> smoke. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I don't smoke. But you know, one one, one thing about these bases is usually, and I know in your case because you're a collector. But when when I was playing in clubs, I only had one bass. Oh yeah, back in the day, back that's in the day, what you, most you, people did. You know, yeah, the first time I had a, a, a second bass or a backup was when I joined Ozzy and they say, oh no, you, you, you know, we're going to take you on the road with just, just in one case. bass. So I bought another bass. Well, I know he also has a 59P bass that he got from me and it's a slab board rosewood neck and that thing was killer played, just unbelievable. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, recently I... Uh, Frankie Benelli, before he passed away, he gave me a 1966 Precision, which is awesome, beautiful. Nice. I mean, look, you know, they don't make them like they used to. Thank you. That's the point of my business. That's why I opened the doors. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a reality. And uh, these instruments have been cherished by the first owner. And yep. they have been played and they have been enjoyed, you know, and they should keep being enjoyed by they'll the last longer than even some youngsters this thing will last their lifetime and maybe they're that's right that's right they will outlive us that's right they knew how to build them they were really going for building the best instrument they could then at later date they started trying to save money and they started cutting back on this that and the other thing the next thing you knew it was not quite the same that's why everybody was going after all these vintage instruments yes. 
what is called you the three CBS models. Right. Yeah, yeah. Have you gotten some mileage out of that other uh, uh, P base? Absolutely, but you know, it's one of those things that I, I don't want to take it on the road. You don't want to take any chances? No, no. So it, it stays at home, but I, I use it a lot when I record. Absolutely. Okay. There's something about a precision passive. A passive instrument, yep. precision, with all the char harmonic characteristics of the way that these are built, that would sit in a mix and you would be able to hear it no matter what. Absolutely. No matter how big the guitars or the drones are. It's James Jamerson, Duck Dunn, all those guys, you know, and Absolutely. all the really rock guys. I mean, you know, but this is the kind. This is, uh, in terms of precision basses, this era, the late 50s, was my favorite era. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just a really great bass. And Rudy has uh, granted me the uh, the wish that I, he came in here. I said, wait a second, Rudy, don't leave. I want you to do, uh, you know, bass of the day, Thumpin' Thursday. And uh, it's a special edition. My buddy Rudy Sarzo, we're going to take it outside and we're going to show you what this thing can do. Cool. Thanks, Rudy. Actually, we're not. He is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Rudy Sarzo right here at Norman's. And uh, I got in my hands, this is a 59 Fender Precision. I've a nice uh, pickguard right here. It's got the thumb rest. Look at this. I've never seen anybody play like this, but it's here in, ca in case you need it. it. This is in beautiful condition. I just love the finish. The, uh, the lacquer is pretty much worn out. Uh, so it breathes a lot, and, and so does the neck. And I just love, love this, this. Uh, I think, I think it's called. What is it called? The uh, this finish. Three tone symbols. Three tone. No, I know, but yeah. Oh, on the neck. On the neck. It's just a maple neck. Yes, know, a maple neck. Yeah. Nice yes, yeah, like it's, it has a very nice, thin lacquer to it because. You know, it just breathes, and somebody used to smoke. <laughs> it's got a little cigarette butt burnt here, which is, it just adds to the coolness of it. Yeah, there's, there's no, no damage to, to the neck whatsoever, as you can tell. Beautiful condition, I just love this. And, you know, the pure tones that you can get out of it. I mean, you know, one of the first things that I do is just, I just play acoustically. Listen to the resonance and the, the sustain. And then I start adding the amplifier. The punch, I just love it. get lost in this base to do some exploration so it's right here at Norman's 1959 precision base maple neck sunburst finish <laughs> thank you